Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today's episode is going to be an SSD update. So we've seen a lot of advancements in SSDs over the last couple of years, going from SATA 2 to SATA 3. Way more advanced controllers than we had on initial SSDs, which were hugely problematic. I mean, if you bought an early SSD, I'm sorry to be the one to break this to you, but you basically got hosed because they don't perform very well. They perform even worse over time. And when you do things, they can just like lock up temporarily. So most modern SSDs, starting from about the Intel X25M, didn't really have any of those problems. However, we have a new SSD, sort of a new kit on the block that I'm really excited about today. So we're gonna be showing you guys and talking a little bit about the Vertex 4 from OCZ. This is the fourth in a long line, well, four, four drives, a long line of drives from OCZ that they consider to be at the Vertex or Apex or the highest point of performance at any given time. So the Vertex 4 uses an Indolinks Everest 2 controller, and we'll talk a little bit more about what that means. Stay tuned. <laughs> So let's do a general look at most of the SSDs variants that are out there these days. So here we've got an ADATA SSD. This is unique in that this is a Sandforce controller with a custom firmware that unlocks extra capacity. So it has the drawback of having less spare area for uh, improving performance over time as well as improving the durability, but you do get the extra capacity. Most Sandforce drives come in 60, 120, 240 gig capacities, and this one comes in 128 instead of 120. Moving over, we've got the Crucial M4. So the Crucial M4 is extremely well regarded. And one of the topics of today's SSD update is going to be firmware updates. Crucial has shown time and time again that they are more than willing to continue to improve the performance of their drive over time. So this guy right here shipped with firmware 0309. Now the latest firmwares from Crucial not only fix bugs and issues, which most SSD manufacturers are fine with, but also they have dramatically updated performance since then, which most SSD manufacturers are not willing to do. Moving over, we have the Intel 520. This is again with a Sandforce controller and synchronous flash. So this is using again a custom, a custom firmware, but slightly different from ADATA's custom firmware. Intel's custom firmware improves the reliability and improves the performance of you know, the standard tried and, two Sandfor tried, and two, tried and true Sandforce async flash combination, which you find in sort of third party drives like a Pyro SE and puts Intel's mark on this particular drive. Speaking from a retailer's perspective, I can tell you the reliability is definitely there for this guy. The OCZ Octane, now I should start by saying OCZ is more than capable of releasing you know, your standard Sandforce drives or whatever else, but since the acquisition of Indolinks, if you guys remember, Vertex 1 used an Indolinks controller, OCZ has released two products uh, two flagship products based on the new Indolinx Everest controller. So this is the Everest 1 and this is the Everest 2. The Octane came to the market with sort of a pretty value-oriented price point, decent performance, especially in non-compressible data. Remember, Sandforce drives perform best with compressible data. Yeah, this guy. Perform best with compressible data, whereas Indolinx controllers, going back to the Indolinx barefoot controller, way back in the SATA 2 days, uh, perform best with all kinds of data. So the Octane was an okay performer, but not really what OCZ was after. The Vertex 4 is the latest SSD update. So this one brings everything OCZ knows about SSDs and puts it all in one place. So this performs like the Everest 1 controller equally well in compressible and non-compressible applications. It is at or near the top of pretty much all benchmarks, right up there with the Intel 520 series. These guys sort of trade blows at the top of the performance spectrum. They both have five-year warranties. So this is the first time OCZ has offered a five-year warranty on an SSD. And speaking again, from a retailer's perspective, I can tell you right now, not a whole lot of them are coming back. So in terms of the reliability of this drive, I can very confidently recommend it. So a final update for all of you guys is SSD capacities. So SSD capacities continue to get less and less expensive. I remember when we first started doing SSD videos, it was a long time ago with the Corsair S series, I think was the first SSD video that I ever worked on. A lot of viewers said, I'm not going to touch an SSD until it gets down to the dollar per gig range. Well, I can tell you guys right now, of all the SSDs in front of me, there are Vertex 3 drives that after MIR are down to under a dollar per gig. There are Crucial M4 drives that are around a dollar per gig. The Intel 520 series is still quite expensive, whereas the Vertex 4 strikes a bit of a balance between those 
uh, lower tier, sort of everyone has the same kind of stuff, Sandforce drives. And then the Intel positioning way up here with sort of their market position, we understand why they're doing that. The Vertex 4 strikes an interesting balance because it performs nearly as well as the 520 has the five-year warranty to go along with it, and falls in between that in terms of a price bracket. So I think that pretty much covers everything there is to say in this SSD update featuring the Vertex 4. Don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips for more reviews, tutorials, and videos about the tech industry from your favorite retailer, NCIX.com.